Hello and welcome to a Cloud Developer Channel. In today's video, I'm going to introduce you to a new proof of concept application that I started working on that I call uh, Distributed Sessions Using Service Fabric. What I'm going to do today is actually introduce you to the high level flow of the application and the things that I'm trying to enable. And then in future videos, I'm going to show you actually how to uh, start building the individual components in order to make this function. So the basic idea that uh, we're going to be working with is, let's say you're building a ASP.NET MSC application. You want the end users to be able to navigate to your application and be able to actually leverage your infrastructure in as highly distributed manner as possible without uh, sensing any impact of which uh, server node that they're actually landing on, as well as where their session information is stored um, and uh, in case uh, there's a failure in one of your nodes that the end user is seamlessly taken to another node and all of their information is actually accessible without them knowing about it. So um, what I have here is an application that uh, I've been using um, in our prior videos where basically it's ASP.NET MEC Core. It's hosted inside of Service Fabric as a stateless application. And um, what we have added to this now is the ability to start using cookies for being able to let the user log in and see protected information. And then also I started implementing a stateful service that is distributed across the five nodes in the service fabric cluster to actually hold information regarding the session keys that uh, each node actually can rely on um, in order to decrypt the actual cookie values that are being stored. And then uh, later what we're going to end up doing is actually creating another what's called a reliable actor service inside of Service Fabric. And that's actually going to start persisting the session information for each user um, and you'll be able to actually retrieve that information using the session key that is stored in one service and then individual user sessions are actually persisted in reliable actor uh, services themselves. So as you can see, I'm actually showing you uh, the home page of the application and when I hit home or click about, the user is navigating uh, to the application normally. Uh, what you also notice is that on the bottom here, we actually have our uh, node name listed. So if I go ahead and start refreshing it, um, you'll see that it's actually bouncing between the five nodes that I have in a cluster. And I'm using network load balancing in order to uh, make sure that I'm able to hit each individual node from a uh, application gateway perspective in Service Fabric, as well as in case uh, one of the actual Service Fabric nodes goes down and the application gateway goes down, I'm still able to get routed to a different node in a cluster and the user uh, gets a more seamless user experience. Now, what I also have here is I have this profile button and if you click this, the user is actually taken to a very a poorly made uh, login page. And uh, in here, I don't even uh, bother hiding the password. Um, we're not gonna be uh, focusing on security in this particular uh, tutorial, but more of how do you implement the reliable uh, session or distributed session management technique. So in this particular case, uh, what you'll notice is that uh, I'm actually bouncing between the different nodes in the cluster. So if I keep refreshing, uh, you'll see that the node name changes. But uh, imagine a scenario where, let's say I try to actually log in. And once I log in, a claim gets created and the user information now is stored in a session cookie. So if I bring up the dev toolbar, you'll notice that we have cookie authentication enabled and that's the cookie. And it also needs to be decrypted. Now, because we uh, have the actual reliable or distributed uh, session mechanism in place, what now happens is even if I try to uh, refresh this page, you'll see that I'm actually bouncing between the server nodes still, but uh, because of the way that I've set it up now, each individual node actually has access to the same uh, what's called a, a data protection key that's stored in a, a stateful service with a reliable replication in Service Fabric itself. So each node in a cluster is actually pulling the same uh, keys. So, and you can use this for other applications, for API authentication and so on um, in, in the future as well.
So, and you can see that I put in a little message here that basically tells me how many keys are actually stored in that session keys service that I have. So just to show you real quick, um, the actual layout of the actual application itself in the service fabric cluster. You'll see that um, I have uh, two specific services uh, and the third one I'm actually not using at the moment, which is this API service uh, that you can ignore that for now. But basically what we have here is we have the UI application, which is our ASP.NET MVC core application. It's sitting on uh, all five nodes. And then we have the session keys um, stateful service that's actually primary on node four. And then we have replicas on node one and three. So, and again, you know, I'm actually bouncing between the nodes and everything is functioning correctly. Now, imagine a scenario that uh, we'll just go in and um, restart the primary node that holds the, the primary uh, partition for our session keys. So that's on node four. So we'll go ahead and actually restart that. And as it's restarting, is not only is it actually restarting um, the actual session keys, it's also restarting the UI package. But let's go back to our application and uh, go to the profile page. So as you can see, everything is actually still fully functional, even though the node is actually restarting. So, and that is because um, the way that we've implemented it, it actually reads uh, the or the actual keys, the data protection keys from um, any node that actually has access to it. So in a service fabric will automatically restart um, all of the right components and failover as appropriate. So you'll now see that the primary node is actually node one and uh, node four became the secondary node. But from an end user perspective, nothing actually happened and the user is still able to fully navigate and use the application as though nothing ever happened. And then just to show you, if I click log out, um, the user is taken back to the home page. And then when we go to profile again, you can see that uh, we're being asked to log in again. So we can do that again, log in, and everything is good. So um, like I said, you know, in the next video, what I'm actually gonna walk you through is the process of how do you start uh, building this solution in order to facilitate the same mechanism for yourself or your application as well as I'm going to add another feature here for being able to actually store uh, user session information because at the moment I'm only ses storing the actual session key in the cookie and there's nothing else being actually persisted in the actual uh, cookie um, mechanism. So, And what that's going to be useful for us is that if you have a highly distributed and highly uh, available application with a lot of users, um, the reliable actors will actually be able to persist their state. So, uh, you know, the different profile settings that the user is actually using or any other information that you would normally store in your session state can now actually be placed in the service fabric nodes and they can be highly available and replicated without you having to actually build that logic into your application because uh, service fabric actually provides that capability for you. So um, if you have any questions related to the, what I covered in this video, go ahead and leave your feedback in the comment section below. And I will uh, look forward to showing you what uh, I'm building here in the next video.